Welcome to episode two of Send Stonks. I am your host, Noah Luden, and I'm ready to recap the past two weeks of Ottawa Senators hockey. Before we get started, please follow Sensetalk on Twitter at Sensetalk underscore for quality Ottawa Senators content. A couple things before we get started as well. Uh, use code Sensetalk to save 20 US dollars off your first purchase at SeatGeek.com for great deals on tickets. As well, be sure to grab your latest Faces Magazine issue today, the premier culture magazine in Ottawa. Faces magazines are offered in free for free in grocery stores and select locations across Ottawa. This month's feature from Faces Magazine features a cover interview with Sens legend Chris Phillips on his new role in the Senators Community Foundation. The issue also features the likes of Sens forward Drake Batherson and Sportsnet's Kyle Bukoskis. Make sure to get your issue today. Also, be sure to follow Faces on all their socials for great content, crazy contests, and more. On Instagram, it's at Faces Ottawa, and on Twitter and Facebook, it's at Faces OTT. With that out of the way, we got a goalie situation to talk about. Philip Gustafson, they're going up. The stonks are rising. Two one and one and four starts. 1.81 goals against a 9.46 save percentage for Gustafson. Man, is he looking good this year. And he's had a phenomenal start. Again, kind of like Decord last time, it's a small sample size. But it is refreshing as a Senators fan to see it from Decord and to see it from Gustafson and to see it from the next guy we're going to talk about. Some consistent, stable goaltending. It's what we've needed all year alongside good defensive play, but as well, just consistent goaltending. It's what we've needed. And Gustafson has been phenomenal. Um, he's a very interesting goalie, and it's going to make that goalie situation next year that much more interesting. You know, Murray's in that big contract. Accord looks ready uh, when he comes back from his injury. Gustafson looks ready. And even Anton Forsberg, who we'll talk in a second, he, he's looking pretty good. And then you got prospects coming up. Kevin Mandelis and Mad Sogard. Man, the Sens are looking good. Mad Sogard as well. And... I don't know. The Sens kind of look stacked at that goaltending position right now, but you know, we got to hope that the uh, good performances keep coming and uh, Philip Gustafsson can keep it going. But right now, the Stonks are definitely rising. And as well, Anton Forsberg, a waiver pickup. The Stonks are rising on him for sure. One and one and two starts, a 288 goals against, and a 924 save percentage. He has been phenomenal to start. Uh, just watched the Montreal Canadiens. Uh, the Sens won 6 3, and man, does. Uh, does Forsberg look good? Um, we thought he was just going to be a roster filler. We, he didn't look... I mean, we didn't. he didn't, hadn't played yet. Um, and so this, his first two starts in the NHL have been great. Or NHL this year have been great. Um, and it helps. And that just supports that interesting goalie situation that the Sens have in 2022. Which means, though, that Matt Murray's stonks are falling even more. You know, even though he hasn't played since the last video was released... It's very telling when you get three goalies, not only three goalies, but three young, inexperienced goalies who are somehow playing better, a lot better than Murray with the same defense. Now, it's not necessarily the same defense, but it's about the same, it's about the same team that they're playing with. And now Murray, I think, should get another shot. Listen, you have him in the contract. What else are you going to do? But at the same time, I Murray better be phenomenal. He better be at the same performance or even better than the younger goalies because they're playing very well for an even cheaper price, a way cheaper price than what Murray is getting paid. So we need to see a lot more from Murray and we can't have him struggle when he comes back from injury. Now let's go to the defensemen. There's not a, that many defensemen to talk about here. Um, they were all pretty steady, but there's a couple I want to touch on. So Braden Colburn, he's only, you know, it's a small sample size. He He's only been back for two games. Um, back in the lineup, he did not look great before that, before he got put on waivers. Um, but right now, he he looked pretty good. And in that 6-3 game against Montreal, the previous one mentioned, he played really well. He had an assist, a plus two rating. He didn't have, a, he wasn't a minus player in the 4-1 loss to Montreal either, which is more than most of the other players can say. Uh, he was a zero rating there. And, you know, Coburn's interesting. I think that if he plays like he did today uh, against the Montreal Canadiens then, or on uh, Saturday against the Montreal Canadiens, a 6-3 win, he can be that sixth guy. I don't really think he'll be that much more, but 
you know, you want to see more from Braden Colburn. It's definitely an improvement to what we previously saw. And maybe, who knows, Colburn could be a nice defensive defenseman that we can have on that third pairing. And talking about defensive defenseman, I guess he's not defensive, but his defensive play has been phenomenal. Mike Riley, the stonks are rising again. He is, I, I just, I'm always impressed with him. He, he had such a bad start to the year. He had a terrible, terrible January. He was bad. At February, he was getting better. March and April have been phenomenal so far. His advanced analytics are great. His chemistry with Artem Zub is great. And he's been a great surprise to Sens fans. He has five points in his last seven games, all assists, but who cares? Points are points. Mike Riley, very, very good so far for the Ottawa Senators. I'm very excited to see how he continues to keep the stonks rising. Hopefully that we can keep it going with Zub and Riley. Zub has also been playing pretty well. So when I don't mention a player in an episode, um, that usually means that their stonks are about the same. And there's not really much to say kind of like zub uh that, that's the last defenseman for much so now we're going to the forward so rest defensemen the they've been okay um a notable is that christian will and got traded so i guess his stonks really <laughs> crashed and as well um brandstrom just hasn't seen the lineup man it, it's bad um i'm not really sure what's going on there uh, dj dj smith likes to play coburn even though coburn had a good game uh, you want to see you want to see brandstrom in the lineup right so interesting situation there in ottawa um see how will that uh pans out but first we'll go to the forwards and artem and nisimov i'm not saying they're going up but they have stabilized for now the stonks have he drew back into the lineup uh in that same 6-3 game against montreal and he had three points and a plus three rating and only 12 minutes of ice time listen i don't expect the world out of artem and nisimov i really really don't but if he plays like this every couple games fourth line center i'm okay with that but in his previous games he was horrendous but right now they're stable they're going neutral because he was going down downhill this game the three assists and a plus three puts him back even let's see what he can do now let's keep it going and that injury to colin white opened the door let's see if uh anisimov can uh can capitalize on an opportunity there drake batherson um this goes for a lot of the top t the top players on the team the brady kachucks of the team the norris stutzel and batherson they're kind of in all in the same boat they've slowed down a little bit um batherson has really had a solid year as, as well as all of them really the norris and kachuk and stutzel they've all been great but the past month or the past couple weeks they've slowed down you can't deny that they've slowed down batherson has just five points in his last 13 games that's okay it, it's not his pace you know he was having baby basically um two points every three games that was his pace now it's he's struggling to get one point every three every three games so it's it's a little bit it's going down a little bit they both and by they both i mean uh kachuk and bathurst so they both had a goal and an assist in the game against montreal the 6-3 win but I'm going to need a little bit more consistency. There's a lot of hot streaks and cold streaks for guys like Batherson and Kachuk and Stutzel and Norris as well. Stutzel hasn't scored a goal, I think, in 11 games now or 10 games. Um, Norris has been up and down. They've all they've been good, but just a little bit more would be nice to see because they're the top guys on the team, right? So I would, I would want to see a little bit more. But Batherson was the main guy I wanted to highlight. Um, he did have a goal and assist last night, even though the goal was an empty net doesn't matter they don't ask how they ask how many he got a goal and an assist in that game so maybe maybe that gives a little bit of confidence and he goes back up clark bishop uh i want to say his stonks are steady but i i want to talk about him because i didn't talk about him much uh, last game or last uh, video rather um he reminds me of connor brown a little bit he plays a fast-paced game he gets a lot of chances but now he needs to capitalize we haven't seen him capitalize on these chances that much he has three points, all assists in the nine games. That's pretty good um, for a guy like Clark Bishop. But man, you, you see all these 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 chances of Bishop almost scoring. Oh, big save here. Oh, we just missed here. Like you want him to put a couple in the net, and it seems like he is the new Connor Brown. And Connor Brown is just a new player. And as Connor Brown stonks, they're rising. He we're finally seeing him capitalize on some chances. He scored 
his third goal in third game so he has a three game goal streak for connor brown he is finally capitalizing on those chances this is what we wanted to see from connor brown let's hope it continues and clark bishop let's hope he can capitalize on those chances um evgeny dadanov now he had two goals against montreal his stonks are steady um he was they were going down because he was invisible uh streaky um this could be one of those streaks but you know this is this saves him from the sense mob it sends him from saves him from the mob where you know we're like oh my god dad and i was just not doing well and that, now two goals we won the game we're feeling nice we want a little bit more from dad and though um just just a little bit more consistency some power play goals he has still zero on the season i think and I, we need a little bit more from Dadanov still, but this is a really good start. Let's hope he can continue a consistent performance and maybe some chemistry with Anisimov, it seems, because they were buzzing around the net against Montreal. Um, and the third guy on that line, Alex Formanton, his stonks, they, they're rising. He has two goals in four games uh, so far this year. Um, his speed, he's speed, man. His, his speed, he's fast. Alex Formanton is a fast, fast guy, and you see it all around the ice. Um, so it's very good to see uh, for him. It looks like he's kind of developing a little bit. Uh, we'll need to see a little bit more development and maybe some more mentoring from the older players, but good stuff from Formanton. This is what we want to see from him. Last player we're going to talk about is Nick Paul. Uh, the train, the train's taking a pit stop. I'm thinking the, the, the Nick Paul train, choo, 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 choo. It's taking a pit stop here. Uh, he hasn't scored a goal since February 15th. Um, he's had a strong start to the year. That's why stonks were going up. Um, I think his, his play has been good. It's kind of like Clark Bishop, right? Where he just hasn't been able to capitalize on his chances. He had a good chance again in this past game that I recently just watched against Montreal. And um, I th I'm sure the train will, you know, get away from the pit stop and keep on going up. But just a, just a little thing to mention. It hasn't been, there hasn't been much on the score sheet from Nick Paul. Um, he hasn't scored a goal again since February 15th and it is right now April 4th. So we're gonna need a little bit more scoring from paul but you know his efforts always there you know that nick paul train is always going but just a little bit of a pit stop it's going slower a little bit but not to worry he will pick it right back up but guys thank you very much for watching that is it for this episode of send stonks thank you very much leave a like and consider subscribing if you enjoyed the video and as well turn the notification bell on so you get notified when a video is uploaded. Make sure to follow SenseTalk at SenseTalk underscore on Twitter. And if you want to see more of me, follow me on Twitter at Noah underscore Luden. I appreciate it, guys. Thank you so much for watching. Uh, be sure to check out the first SenseTalks episode to where, we, where I kind of recap the full beginning or full half, I guess, of the Sense season. Uh, so maybe if I, like Thomas Shabbat, Nikita Zaitsev, those are guys I hadn't talked about. Uh, in this video, I talked about them in the last video and basically recap their performance. Thomas Shabbat, pretty solid. All I'm going to say about that. But thank you so much for watching. I appreciate it all and uh, appreciate the support as well. And we'll see you guys for episode three.